if you see the chronicles of higher education at all, you know there's been a flurry of articles all summer long about the crisis in the humanities and the precarious nature, the precarious future of the uh, political arts generally. Uh, seems to me it's kind of piling on that the House Appropriations Committee has recommended cutting the funding, funding for NEH in half, has recommended cutting the funding for the NEA in half. The National Science Foundation has decided it really doesn't want to give very much research support to political science. The most optimistic thing I think I saw about our disciplines all summer was something I saw last week entitled, The Humanities Aren't As Dead As You Think. <laughs> and I, I'm not even sure is grammatically correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of that troubling news about the future of our disciplines hits close to home. Here at Potter College, the number of majors in college has declined by about 200 since, uh, since this time last year. We've generally run about 4,000 majors or so. Uh, this is a drop of about 5%. And while some departments have been hit especially hard, this is a decline so broad and has had, uh, had an impact on really virtually every department in, uh, in the college. It's a decline that we simply can't ignore. And we're going to have to give this some serious attention in the coming year. Why, why this decline? Well, one, one thing, quite simply, is enrollment cycle. I mean, I know that sounds like a very passive thing, but the truth is that we're all that. That's, that's the way it is. But beyond that, the economic downturn, the publicity about unemployed recent college graduates, the failure to launch phenomenon, rising student, student indebtedness, they all seem to kind of prod students in the direction of tailoring the college experience to fit that first job or to make that first job more accessible. And, you know, I've got to say this, virtually every public official in America uh, seems to be talking constantly about the importance of the STEM disciplines. And I hardly ever, ever hear one of them ever say, we need more folks working in art and sociology. That's true, but they never seem to say that. Actually, I, I think in some ways, the best disciplines that the, the best demonstration of reports of our demise are driven exaggerated, that our disciplines <coughs> remain alive, well, and vital. has been the remarkable series of arguments that's been generated by all these assertions about decline. Stan and Fitch chimed in with a whole page of really snarky comments. <laughs> Y'all, anyway, don't, don't look at me on this. And I mean, Dean Fitch is fellow dean. I read his stuff because he is so grumpy ill-tempered, so snarky. But there's so much snarky and snarkiness in there, I can hardly figure out what the point is. <laughs> and I think that's kind of my reaction to this latest piece that I read. But, but he's nevertheless in the, in the conversation, and no surprise. Nate Silver, Nate Silver, of all people, 538 guy, uh, says that the doomsayers have got their math all wrong. Others say that humanity's really collapsed in the 1970s and things are actually better now. Uh, so others say that the liberal arts are down because the women students who once would have been French majors are now taking technological engineering. In short, much of the response to reports about decline has been for the liberal arts to do pretty much what our disciplines do best. Not so much to provide answers, but to force everybody to think a lot more clearly and to ask better questions. So where's Potter College in all of this? Our enrollments have sat, admittedly. But the intellectual vitality of this college, it seems to me, in word, is remarkable. In the last four or five years, who cares about numbers? The last four or five years, since the big downturn in 08, we've added about 10 new degree programs to this college. We have more full-time faculty and more tenure eligible faculty members than we've ever had. We're spending more on faculty development and more on student research than we ever had. Two years ago, as part of this meeting, I ran down a list of eight ideas that had crossed my desk in the previous month. Not necessarily the eight best ideas or the eight most important ideas, just eight ideas that had crossed my desk in the previous month. Just for the heck of it, I went back and looked. And of those eight ideas, just in a talking stage two years ago, five of those are reality now. 
five of those are actually physically incarnate somewhere around this college or around, around this campus, including most recently a survey, survey research center that was cooked up by Jerry today and Scott Lassen and Joel Turner. And it's going gangbusters out of the of research and development. A number of I would like to give you to kind of, because uh, uh, this is a number that's, that's important to me. I don't know, I don't know necessarily about it, but it's important to me. We have 61 assistant professors in this college. <coughs> we have 61 assistant professors in this college. That represents, to me, a tremendous short-term investment in our disciplines and a long-term commitment to those, uh, to those disciplines. What we have heard about folks are untenured assistant professors with all the potential, all the promise, and all the investment goes with that. I don't think there's any other way to demonstrate not only our importance immediately, but our long-term vitality. So, where do we kind of fall out of all of this? Most importantly for me at the end of the day, this college absolutely bubbles with new ideas. Our faculty is growing, our curriculum is expanding, and we've also got some things that we've just got to think about. We need to do a better job of telling our stories. We need to be aggressive and creative about student recruitment and student retention. We need to think imaginatively about how the liberal arts disciplines fit in a 21st century university. I've always tended to think about it in terms of silos, but, but there are more and more ways in which the kind of learning that we're <coughs> learning can suffuse into other, uh, other disciplines, into other areas. And maybe there are some new and more creative ways in which we can that we've talked about partnerships with before, but maybe there needs to be a stronger, better thought out kind of intellectual and intellectual partner than we really have come with before. And fundamentally for me, also kind of at the end of the day, I think we need to remember that we have more power to shape our future than I think we often tend to do. I haven't said enough about students today, uh, and I perhaps only indirectly. But I suspect that they are probably doing even more than we are to demonstrate that the disciplines in this college are alive and well and making a difference in a wider community. Whether that's our music students performing in Beethoven and Beijing as they were doing a few months ago, or criminology students studying next to prisoners in, uh, in, 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 in facilities, or here's photojournalism students bring them back and be shocked with the Kentucky community in a way that they've probably never seen before. Our students understand the vitality of the liberal arts because you've shown it to them. And our students are lucky to have the chance to work with you, and so am I. It's great to see you this morning. I want to wish you the very best for a great academic